Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of uh, Q&A Thursdays with Mud Buddy Motors. Uh, we've got a really excellent um, treat for you today. We are at, we're at Lynn Russ Aluminum Products today. We're going to show you some really, really incredible stuff. So thank you for joining us today. As usual, you can type in your questions. We're going to get to those a little bit later. We're going to spend the first 10, 15 minutes uh, walking you through this really incredible process. Um, of how they cast and x-ray and, and work this aluminum casting for us. So stay tuned, ask your questions, we're going to get to those. If you have some uh, that maybe we can get through in the middle, uh, we'll try and get to those. And of course, uh, I am here with Micah and Keith and we've got our new friend, John. John. Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to let you kind of maybe take us from here, tell us what we're about to see, um, and then we'll, we'll get started. Yeah, well thanks for coming today. Yeah. And, uh, I'm glad you guys can all make it. Uh, Lindros Aluminum Products has been around since 1949. Uh, we have uh, been involved in many different industries. So we manufacture our own products here. And we've been a proud partner to Bud Buddy, uh, I think since the inception of Bud Buddy. And Micah and I were just talking about yeah, that. Yeah. Came here to watch the first castings get. Uh, right. um, yeah. When, uh, when uh, Glenn first came here, he wanted to have a, 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 an overbuilt and uh, tough casting and so we uh, said come on in and, and let's help you and let's work together and get this done and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to follow through uh, the plant we'll go see a machining process uh, these are all mud buddy parts they're actually cast and machined and made right here in our plant uh, so we'll walk through that uh, we'll actually walk into the foundry and watch them cast some parts uh, ask any questions anything we can answer we'd be glad to help and, uh, and then we're going to end up in our x-ray room to show the kind of quality uh, process that we go through on these castings to make sure that you get a safe part and a well-built part on your boat. So let's head on into the machine shop. Perfect. Awesome. Before we go though, I do want to say what, like, what kind of safety do we need to be aware of as we're going? We've all got safety glasses on. Is there anything else that we need to be aware of safety-wise? You know, uh, every, everything in our plant, what we say to people is it's very hot. Very hot. We, uh, we'll see some pots of molten aluminum, and uh, you just never know what's hot in this uh, in this plant. And so we just say, you know, don't touch anything because you might go home with a burn. Right. <laughs> so don't touch. Excellent. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's go. Let's head on in. Thanks. Is Dan Fuckmiller here? I was told there was a meeting here with Dan Fuckmiller. Uh, I'm not sure. Our, our receptionist will be right back. Oh, okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah, come, come come over here, Derek. Like right yeah, about there. Yeah. This is uh, kind of a final process here. Uh, and then, when this part's yeah, hey, that's uh, that's a casting that's actually got cast in inserts, and uh, that's what they look like when they come out of the mold. And uh, we uh, take that part; it gets uh, heat treated. These parts are heat treated to a specification that's similar to what you find on suspension components in a car, or like a ski lift component or a roller coaster wheel, which are all things that we manufacture here. Uh, the reason we do that is because it gives a superior strength to the part and uh, you know something that you could beat on this all day with a sledgehammer and you're not going to do anything to it. So uh, these parts get uh, cast, heat treated, and then they come here to our machine shop. And in our machine shop, uh, you know, we, uh, we have obviously, we meet the standards that Lead Buddy requires us to meet and they're very exacting standards. Uh, you know, we don't want any parts leaking, we don't want any parts failing out in the field. And uh, so, uh, they're right here machining these parts and uh, it's all done right here. Okay. You run one? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, them. Yeah. 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 We going to start one up? Yeah, I can start one. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. All right, we'll start one up. So for this process right here, how, does, how long does this process, at like this stage, how long does it take to complete like well, one piece? So kind of a... Well, you know, I mean, it depends on the part. We have parts for uh, Mud Buddy that take us up to an hour for each individual part to machine. Uh, these parts right here, they might take 10 or 15 minutes to do. It's a, it's a relatively simple machine operation. Yeah. 
yet the bit, the base. This is the this is the base. We're going to watch this part being cast today. Uh, we're not machining this today, but we're going to watch this cast. And this is the one. Uh, this is a really critical sealing surface. Uh, we actually have to put this on a special mill uh, because it's got that O-ring that runs around the entire edge of this, and that's what uh, gives it such a great sealing surface. Uh, so, yeah, go ahead and run it. I don't know there'll be much to see here because we get to close that data. So while he's putting that part in, you can see the difference between a machine part and a cast part. We can put them down here. And you can kind of see that it kind of cuts away the metal, and you start with this raw part, and you end up with this beautiful part that's uh, ready to be sealed and uh, painted and assembled. Uh, another thing uh, we do with these parts is we, uh, we date these parts uh, so it's serialized, so we know if there's ever an issue, we can come back and we can look at all the records and heat treat and machining and everybody who's worked on that part uh, to uh, diagnose if there's some kind of a systematic problem. Oh, cool. uh, and that's something that uh, Mud Buddy requires us to do, and uh, we do that for a lot of other customers as well. So what's he, what's he putting in the hole? Yeah, it's just a, it, it, this is just a picture. Hold the part down. Yeah, this is just a picture. Hold the part down. And, uh, well, I can start, yeah, but I had to ahead. close them. Close the door, and we're started off. So he's gonna start with a casting, and it'll come out. Am I able to see? Perfectly it? machine part. Uh, probably saw that it went dark, so I don't, I don't know if we told them yet. So there are parts in here that, that they don't want to show that are that are trade secrets, so some of these times when we're moving, when we're transitioning from area to area, we're going to kind of just show Keith's back. So you're very lucky that you get to see Keith's back and not Micah's back. But uh, So that's why it goes dark, so don't worry when that happens. But we are going to show you some of this now. They've got a lot of... Uh, a lot of things going on. There's a lot of fire in here right now, so it's really excellent. It's really loud, so thanks for sticking with us. We're going to get to your questions um, as soon as we can once we finish this tour, so keep those questions coming. I have them right here. Uh, but yeah, let's continue. Yeah, let's, uh, let's walk around here. Watch this happen. Yeah, we'll set everything's hot. We're going to walk water up here. You can see a pot full of metal. This is where we start. Uh, we start our product with uh, ingot metal only. Uh, some places, if you buy something overseas, they'll use scrap metal. Uh, we only use prime ingot for our Mud Buddy parts. And as you can see here, uh, this is actually a pot of uh, molten aluminum. And uh, we melt down our ingot into this pot and they'll actually ladle into this part and uh, make a, a Mud Buddy casting here in just a minute. That metal is probably about 1,200 degrees right now. Uh, varies depending on the part that we use. Uh, he's, gonna, he's taking a part out right now.
set that down and let that cool a little bit. We're going to back off this platform so he can work. Uh, we can get a shot from the back up right here and you'll be able to get a shot of him actually uh, ladling the metal and pouring it into this core.
of a, it's a part of a gas motor. And uh, the motor come out of the, those come out of the foundry, and then the, these will get, they'll get sawed, all the excess material will be sawed off. It'll be sanded, and then it'll head into the heat treat facility. Uh, these over here are heat treat tanks and age of it. This is one of our older uh, heat treat tanks. Uh, what this does is this actually heats the castings to near the melting point. Uh, they're almost like uh, Play-Doh. You can, you can smash them with a hammer and they just come right apart. But they get heated in here for up to 10 hours or 12 hours, and then they come out, and this is actually a 10 to 15 foot deep tank, and the parts have to be dropped into that tank within 10 seconds, and that's called a quench. Uh, then those parts uh, sit for a predetermined amount of time, and then they go into an age oven, and they get aged. And that's what gives them a T6 or a T61 heat treat, which makes them so tough and so strong, and that's why you just, you don't have broken castings. It makes them really strong. Uh, and when these get done, we, we run test bars, we pull test, we harden this test, uh, we do chemical analysis so that we can assure that what you ordered is what you got. Right. Uh, and then we'll walk over to the x-ray, that's another uh, layer of uh, all this come alive uh, and he's actually you can look if you want to turn the camera on here you can see what they're looking at today uh, that's a, a, a mud buddy park in there yes it um, is so what are you looking for um, on this I have uh, examples um, we try to find indications light indications uh, and it'll look similar to this um, this is a void um, so that's another part that uh, that we cast that uh, we rejected. That wasn't a mud buddy part, <clears throat> but if you see that, what that indicates is that's a hole in the casting. You can't see it from the outside of the casting, 
but that's a hole that internally could cause a failure in the future. Future, it's basically an air an air bubble. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is actually what, what we found here. This is the same mold fix. And we actually found that we inherited a mold that had a, a previous insert into it, and this insert created a turbulent. You see this drop right here? Uh huh. All right. Why? What happened is as the metal would flow, it would start to swirl. And we had to catch her an air bubble here all the time. Wow. Um, so we're ab actually able to, you know, measure to. Um, we can take a known measurement and we can actually measure an internal bubble and tell you how big it is. Uh -huh. and, you know, so sure. we're we're not, you know, we're, we're it's not a guess. It's yeah. it's a measurement. So. And so, and sometimes the the that's a bubble, but most in most cases failures and castings happen when you have what's called porosity, and that happens when somebody hasn't designed the mold properly. Uh, we have a solidification modeling software that we use that actually uh, interpolates what the casting will look like when it's done. Now, a lot of people build molds and they cast molds and they look beautiful on the outside, huh. but if you haven't had it solidified properly, you're going to get uh, a shrinkage, and that's not a bubble, it's where the metal actually doesn't pull right and it pulls away from each other, right. and you don't want that. Uh, and you can see here that this is, uh, I think this is part of the HDR, right? Yes. Yeah, this is, uh, like this is where your drive shaft goes uh, from the HDR. And so to have that be solid and x-ray quality, yeah, so you know, that's going to provide you something that is, is, you know, you know that when you're out there on the field, you don't have to wonder, you know, how did these guys make this part? So we can actually do, you know, you can see this. So you're looking right through the part. That's incredible. Yeah. And so we can check uh, surfaces, internal surfaces. Um, this is actually where your rod goes through. Mm -hmm. So we can actually check there. We can check the other side. Um, you know, I can look for porosity, which would be holes, you know, similar to that. Right. Um, I can actually come up to it here, and then this would be another, you know, surface of, of you know, uh, concern. And I can actually uh, zoom out on that and give me a all my fine detail and then I can zoom into this area right here and I can actually blow it up to where I can see any kind of any kind of porosity or anything like that. Wow. So is this a, a passable part, Will? Yes. Okay. Very, very Great. So. That's a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> no, you, do this to, you do this to every every one that comes out or every batch? We, or we every have a process that we follow so you have to make a certain percentage of the batch right. and if you don't meet that percentage you've got to start all over again. Uh, so every uh, every customer has a different uh, a, a different requirement. Um, a lot of times, even if we don't have an extra requirement for a part, we'll bring it in here just to make sure that it is. Sure. Uh, sometimes uh, people take for granted that the part looks beautiful on the outside, <laughs> but it's you know moldy cheese on the inside. You can't see it, and you don't see that until somebody has a problem, and we don't want it to get to that. Right. Excellent. That's amazing. Yeah. What a so what cool, a cool process. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot to it. It's uh, it's not just uh, pouring metal in a in a mold. There's a lot to this process, and there's a lot to making the right part and a good part. Well, cool. Um, any questions from you two that we can ask John while we're here? Um, how many of these uh, metal housings, the motion bases, do you guys do here? Thousands. Yeah. 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 A lot of them. A lot of them. And then that's thousands of coverage as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, my buddy's been I've never seen skills. any issues with the belt houses. No. Or the covers or, you mm -hmm. know, anything like that. They take, so, they take a beating. They really do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You see some that's of the videos where, out there, and you're like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> do you have to do that? That's but, where all the pressure's know. Yeah. Well, we like, I mean, we like to say that we're perfect all the time, and but we do run into issues, and that's the nice thing about having, uh, I mean, Mud Buddy's within, what, ten, five miles of here, uh -huh. and, uh, you know, if there's a problem, we get a call, and uh, we're, we're on the spot, we get in the truck and drive over, and yeah. we solve it, we'll fix it, and, yeah. um, you know, that just makes it, I think that makes it that much better of a partnership for us. Right. Yeah, me too. So, and that's one thing yeah. we like at Mud Buddy is we have a lot of our vendors are local here to where we are. Right. Most of them are within 10 to 15 miles of the shop. Right. So if we have an issue or something that we need to change or look at, it's uh, it's a short little drive. It's not like we're driving to California or to Arizona or yeah. Wyoming. We're driving a few miles up and down the freeway for all the different things that we do here local. We like to keep our business local. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And we've been working with you guys since, since the beginning, 2000. 2000. Yeah. 2000. Yeah. 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 So it's yeah. been, been really great. great really yeah, we have a lot of long-term, I mean, most of our customers are long-term customers. Um, and, and what that means for us is that we're vested in, in our customers' outcomes. Right. right. So, you know, if my buddy does well, then we do well. And, uh, you know, and when you have a customer that's been around for 18 years, you, you yeah. know, we really, <laughs> yeah. really get to, to know each other and work yeah. well together. And it's been really exciting to watch it grow. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna start with some questions. If you haven't written in your questions yet, go ahead and do that now. We've got a few minutes left that we're gonna uh, take some questions and answer this. Uh, first question that did come up early on um, from Caleb. He says, "What's going on with the uh, giveaway time?" Which is the question on everybody's mind. I get it. Um, today is the last day. If you haven't signed up, if you, your friends haven't signed up, if you guys haven't signed up, you better do that now. Uh, but we are doing that giveaway. We're gonna draw for that. Uh, you'll know the winner on the 28th. It will be the last day of the month is when we're actually going to do that. So stay tuned. Um, when I know, you'll know. So it's going to be really exciting. Everybody stay tuned. It's going to be awesome. But it is coming. We're working really hard to get that all uh, settled, and, and we're just excited. So it's going to be awesome. Okay, let's see here. Uh, Timothy Floyd says, Mud Buddy Motors, best on the water. Thank you, Timothy. Thank you. You're, you're Timothy. awesome. Really appreciate it. Uh, I've got a hello from Louisville. Uh, Caleb, best motor on the market, no doubt. Uh, Bob Dreyer, Mud Buddy was my first mud motor from switching from the outboard, and now I'll never go back. Keep up the great work, guys. Thanks. Thanks, Bob. You're, you're yeah. amazing. Thanks. Uh, Mark Harrell, will the hammer blade be okay with my 4400? Should be okay. Yeah, you, um, it just depends on the, how heavy the load is that you're going to be carrying and what size boat you're running, but you should be fine with that. Yeah, I absolutely, and it seems to be a pretty common question uh, with these Perhaps. propellers. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, if they have questions like this continually, where, where's the best place to go? Really grab that information. I know we uh, talked about it on a lot of our. <laughs> we have. You can absolutely so. go back and watch them. That's what I was. Uh, that's what I was pushing yeah. for. Definitely uh, go back. Check out some of the other videos. Uh, BPS also um, had a video on just yesterday that talked a little bit about uh, props. So there are lots of resources out there because. Yeah. Uh, you know, props are important. Right. I mean, that's yeah. that's uh, an important part of it. So we want you all to get the right one. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cody, Mud Buddy Motors rocks. Thanks, Cody. Thanks, Cody. Uh, Mark Harrell, you're awesome. Mark, he's been commenting through the whole thing. Really, guys, he says thank you so much for making these videos. They really make it easier for us to understand so many of these uh, we wouldn't normally ask. Love these motors. Mark, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Thank it's you. It's so nice much, to come Mark. to places like this because, you know, yesterday I said on a little Facebook thing we did, it's been 11 years I've been with Mud Buddy and I've never been here. So I'm as excited as our yeah. viewers are <laughs> to come and see what this Absolutely. is all about because you just picture, yeah, they just dump some aluminum stuff into here and it's done. There's a lot of it. It's not a 10 minute process. No. It's yeah. A, yeah. It takes yeah. quite a while. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and a, a lot, lot of skill of, and time and safety and hard work. Absolutely. Just from an engineering standpoint, of before you even get to the process right. is intense. Oh, yeah. Just... Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's see. Chip Lane, XL Boats, and Mud Buddy Rocks. Chip, thank Thanks. you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, Michael Starman writes, is there going to be a kit to convert CARB 44 HDR Black Death to an EFI? I think also another question that we've yeah, talked we about. All the time. Yeah, we get that all the time. But there are some kits out online that are aftermarket. Um, they're kind of a universal kit for several different motors, but um, straight from Briggs, I don't know of any kits that they offer. You know, that's exactly what the EFI 44s have. So, um, excellent. Uh, Cole Flowers writes, "How much does a 37 HDR weigh?" That's about 310 to 315 pounds. Uh -huh. Yeah, is what your weight is. Um, how's that c compare to some of the other motors, like the the 44? which probably is heavier. All, then, all of the all large vanguards, so say like your 35, your 37, your 44s, they all weigh the same. Okay. When you get into the the 23s and the 26 and a half Kohlers, you're dropping 40 to 50 pounds. And it's mainly the size of the motor that you're losing the weight on. Right. Unless you go to the mini frame and that's motor size, uh, the material of the frame, and you don't have the actuator or those kind of things. So they're quite a bit lighter too. So. Absolutely. Uh, Casey Rhodes says, turn it up, Mud Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we will. Casey, in fact, Casey, I've got a Mud Buddy t-shirt for you. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, PM me in this uh, this post. 
Um, send me your details and I'll get that sent off to you, Casey. I really appreciate it. Uh, all of you guys, thank you so much. Uh, let's see, Jacob Crane writes, will a mud buddy mount to the kick-up transom on my XL F4-1751? It currently has a Yamaha 60 horsepower, but would like to get a mud buddy to swap from time to time. You could swap it on there, you'll have to adjust it. But yeah, like, uh, like hard adjust, is that, is that something they can do on their own? Is that something That's they need something to take in? That you could do on your own. Yeah. Okay. So it's not too big of a job, but it takes a little time. So. Yeah, are they going to need any special the, tools? The What's... best thing to do is just mount it straight to the transom. So. Okay. Excellent. That's a great boat, though. That, that F4 yeah. 1751, I'm a, I'm a fan. I like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, Jeremy Green, can you run 100 or 110 octane fuel in a 37 EFI? Um, you can blend it, but you don't want to run it straight. Um, the fuel, 100, anything over 100 octane is real dry. It dries out the valve guide, so you end up sticking a valve. Um, so if you want to run 100, just mix it, um, you know, like 3 to 1 or something like that. Yeah. Just don't run it straight. <laughs> Got so. it. Excellent. All right. Well, we have time for a few more. Write those in if you need. Um, but uh, Keith had something kind of important he wanted to uh, just touch up with everybody with these. Just uh, mainly, rigs. guys, Mud Buddy products are pretty much Utah grown. Uh, you've seen our aluminum uh, foundry guys here at Lynn Russ, they do a wonderful job for us. Our powder coaters here local, our machine shops are local. It's all local. We like to keep it local. It's easier to keep track of and know where the stuff is. You have a better working relationship with your vendors when they're close versus out of state. And we've got great working relationships. Lynn Russ has been awesome for us. You know, they were probably one of the first ones that Mud Buddy got in, involved with as far as the casting stuff as we transition from the long tails into surface drives. Right. So, you know, they've been a great working partner um, and just had glad to be able to work with guys that are local yeah. that if we need to visit with them or we want to visit with them, mm -hmm. it's a quick 15, 20 minute trip and that's where we are. Not only, you know, we just try to do local stuff, and, you know, keep keep our economy yeah, in Utah going. Absolutely, so right here in Utah, absolutely. And there is a lot of the, the companies that are here in Utah um, they're worldwide. They, they've got parts that go everywhere. I'm sure, John, you guys ship stuff oh, internationally. Yeah, internationally yeah. So it's not you're not just a little mom and pop store here in Utah. You've got stuff that goes out internationally. Yeah. And that, that makes it better for us, too, because we know these guys, they're not just here for Mud Buddy. You know, we're probably a small little piece of the pie <laughs> yeah. to compare to yeah. some of the stuff they do. But we just want to say thanks to our yeah. to our local vendors here Absolutely. in Utah that really yeah, make shirts. Yeah, you want to see those shirts? Yeah, here, makes let's, let's, Utah a... Uh, uh, Make well, Mud Buddy are, better product. Those yeah, are nice shirts. Around. Yeah, that's a good one. Those are those are those are really deluxe shirts. Yeah, huh? they're nice and soft. <laughs> yeah. That's the kind of shirt you're gonna wear. Quality. We're gonna yeah, wear quality quality shirts. We're gonna coat them in aluminum. <laughs> yeah, they won't cope very well. <laughs> awesome. Very good. Um, we were gonna talk a little bit about. Uh, we did just send out a message uh, from. Briggs. Oh, yes, great. Uh, Briggs. Do you want to tell them kind of what so, that was just last night? Everything thing? that's going on with your Briggs regulator and uh, burning up. Best thing you can do, if you're going to store it for long term, disconnect the positive lead on your battery cable. We at Mud Buddy put 175 amp fuse on your positive lead. That should, I'm not saying it will, but it should keep down the issues that Briggs is having. They are working on a solution. Uh, we've been in contact with them. As soon as we know more, we'll get that out, information out to you. But the, that fuse will help you. But if you're going to store it for uh, more than a week or two or three weeks, just disconnect the battery. You know, Perco switches work great too because that cuts the power off. And so we just want you to be safe. So disconnect the battery if you're storing it for a while. If not, make sure you have one of those 175 amp fuses. Um, if you need one and you're not sure, it didn't affect all the motors. It affected them from June of 17 to December of 17. And that was almost 500 motors that we sold at Mud Buddy that fit in that category. So there's there's a lot of motors out there. So and, if you're not and sure, to date, none of them have been Mud Buddies that have that we've had no, an issue no, with. As of Mike and I standing here today, neither yeah. one of us had 
and he calls us saying uh, we've, they've had an electrical issue with their mud buddies. Right. So uh, there will be an email that's going out um, in the next couple of days. Keep an eye on that. That's got a little more information. If you have any questions or concerns, definitely hit up uh, Keith or Micah about that. Uh, you just go to Keith at MudBuddy.com. Uh, he's an expert, of course, so he can help you out. <laughs> He likes to tell people he's an expert, so he may or may not be able to help you out. <laughs> Just kidding, he is. Um, I think that's it. I think that's yeah. all we've got. John, thank you so yeah, much. It's been a real it. pleasure. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. Um, keep coming with the questions. We'll answer these a little bit later as they come through if we didn't get to them uh, right now. Uh, and tune in next week, and we'll see you then. And maybe Thanks, we'll John. see Jason. Yeah. Thanks, John. Yeah, you got it. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Bye, everybody.